Hi and welcome to another video and in today's video we're going to take a look at this Steel HS80 hedge trimmer. I got this with a job lot of other stuff and most of that stuff I actually just sold straight away without um, repairing it. I kept a few things back and this was one thing I kept back because I thought it was well worth repairing and I did spray a bit of carb spray in there and it did fire I and mean, then hopefully uh, a carb clean and maybe a diaphragm and gasket set um, and that will be all good uh, and I'll give it a bit of a clean up may sharpen the blades if they need it i'll see but yeah these were good old hedge cutters back in uh probably the 90s i would imagine it's well worth repairing and i think that it would sell all right we'll get stripping it down and see if we can sort this one out so now let's get this carburetor off uh just two eight mil nuts So now the nuts are off, that should just pull off as it does. And that's got the choke mechanism in it. I'll just put that to the side. Uh, we have this plate here. Get that help. Remember it goes that way with the holes at the back and it actually says top there, points that way. Even though that's not the top, so I'm not really quite sure what they're trying to tell me there. But anyway, it goes on that way. This is where I think I can just squeeze the primer bolt past there. So the top does need to come off. So I'll get that off off camera. There's three bolts there. They're T27 Torx. There's one through the front there. And also the spark plugs got to come out. I'll do all that and I'll be back with you when I'm taking the carb off. So now the cover's off, I can get the carburetor off easy. Also by taking the cover off, I can give a better clean underneath as well i will take the exhaust off as well because i will check to see if there's any piston damage and i can do the same from this side when the carburetor is off so get this off first Let's release the cable there'll only be the fuel lines after that um that one there goes to the front of the carb so we'll just nudge it nudge that off tight Bit tight, didn't want to come off. He squirted petrol at me. Um, and then we've got the other one under there. So they're both off now. So the carb will come off. There you go. Not too grubby, the outside isn't, but we'll get it all apart and give it a good clean. And the number is in there. What I've got, uh, use if I get the gasket set, diaphragm and gasket set. So I'll just put that to the side at the moment. Uh, I'll put, I'll turn it over, look in there. You probably can't see in there. I can only just see in there, but I can see that piston is really, really good. You will struggle to see in there, but I have got a torch just so you can see a bit. To me, it looks really, really good. So I'm happy with that. And I will take the exhaust off as well, just so. We can check from that side then we know we're working with a good engine so now the exhaust is off and you can see the piston there there's a few light scratches on there but nothing to worry about i think that's fine and i can see right through to the other side of the bore as well and it looks really good over there yep i don't think that's going to be a problem so what i'm going to do now is get the exhaust back on i'll put that back on and then you'll see me next when i'm taking the carburetor apart now we've got the carb on the bench um i could blow off the outside and clean it but i haven't got the compressor built up at the moment so and it's getting quite late so i'll just take it apart and we'll have a look and then i can clean it afterwards take that part off first clean enough in there it doesn't mean that there isn't something blocked uh, I'll take this side off as well I can see that that is a diaphragm got a bit saggy it's a lot worse I've seen them a lot um, sort of crunchier 
And again, this has had some fuel for it. But when I got it, didn't have no fuel in it. So I could have been sitting a long time with no fuel in it because I put some in to try and start it. So, can't do that with gloves on. We just, yeah, there we go. I won't pull off the gasket at the moment because I will just have a look for all my bits and pieces. I might have one of them and the gasket is good enough to go again. But I will be taking that out so I can get that needle valve out. So I'll do that now. careful of the spring you don't want to lose that oh, the spring is still in that it's out now there so that's a carb apart there is an adjustment screw there which i will take out soon i won't do that at the moment i'm gonna go and see if i've got a diaphragm for it first if not i'm gonna order one so i'll leave this together until i've got the replacement parts i need uh the carb number is a c1q and it's a Still Zama. So, um, yeah, I'm going to have a route through to see if I've got one of them diaphragms, and then I can get back on with this job quick. If not, I'm going to have to wait a couple of days for the new diaphragm to come. The diaphragm and gasket set has come. Took quite a while to come, actually, but it's an Oregon one. I have undone the pack because I want to check the right part in there. But I need to clean the carb out first. Uh, it doesn't actually look very dirty at all. I'm just going to blast it through with some of this carb cleaner and yeah just give it a basic clean up i'm going to try not to take that out as well that little gauze i've never seen a fit back in properly when you take them out so i'm going to see if i can get away without taking it out and adds the carbs not dirty um i'm not sure it's going to need to come out just blow through the remember to wear safety glasses when doing this because you don't want this stuff in your eye and I think this stuff, the cheaper stuff actually, Rockwood, I think it's even worse because I think I've got it in my eye. Um, I've had carbs around my eye a few times and it's an experience you don't want to experience. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to give it a good clean out. There was a couple of other bits I had to take it out. One was there and I think there's a little washer in there. I don't want to lose that. A little copper washer in there. See if I can actually get it out now. Yep, it's come out. There we are. We don't want to lose that. You've got to be careful with things like this. Because when you start blowing them out, you can easily blow out a washer or something. And you don't want to be searching around on the floor trying to find them. I might even keep the gaskets on as well. Because that gasket's still stuck on there. I might even keep that on there. So at the end, I just fed you through me cleaning the carb. Uh, I've done loads of them, much the same. You just go through all them little holes, and make sure everything is clean, the best you possibly can. So I'm gonna firstly put that little washer back in. That was in there. So I've dropped that back in and then this goes back in. That screws in fully. I never showed you me taking that out, but yeah, that just screws straight back in. So we'll get that back in. That's tight. And we have a fuel adjuster one there. And that went in and come out about one and a half turns, I think it was. I never showed you me taking that out either, but yeah, simple. I'll just screw that all the way in. So it's half, one, half, just a tiny bit more than that. So yeah, that's all good. Now I want to get the needle valve back in. It goes in there. The gasket does get in the way a little bit, but yeah, I'm keeping that gasket. Um, so I'm going to get the spring in there. 
balance the spring in there which is always a little bit tricky sorry my hands are in the way but you can see it's balanced in there now i'm just going to put it on the bench and then in one movement try and get this needle valve underneath that bit of gasket and in place where are we and it's nearly there caught on the gasket a little bit but there we are we're in place there i have caught that okay it's a bit hard for me to show you that but all i've got to do now is just put the little bolt back in there so i'll get that done there we are So now the needle valve and everything is in, I can put the diaphragm on, like that. And I have this piece to go on next. Uh, that goes pipe there and pipe there, they're both on the same side. So that goes on top like that. I have the two shorter bolts to go in first. They have to go in first because that edge of that part covers it up too much, so you can't get these in afterwards. So let's just get it in line. So we'll get them screwed up. And now that part goes on top. And then we have the two longer bolts to hold that in. So now all we have to do is fit this other side back on. You can see the screen there. It's not a black one anymore, but that's the one that comes with the kit. So that's the one that's going on it. So we have to put that on this side. See if we can get it lined up because I have to pull the throttle off a little bit. Yeah, we're all good there. That's all in place. Now I've just got the bolt to go in. So the carb now has been all cleaned, it's got a new diaphragm in, so it should be good to go. So what I'm gonna do now is get the machine back on the bench and we'll get this fitted back onto it. So now, as you can see, the hedge cutter is back on the bench and we can get the carburetor back on. Um, there is a gasket there. I've put that back on already. I've got the fuel lines there, but I'm gonna put them back on afterwards. I'm just gonna get this in place first and get the throttle cable back on. Uh, the throttle cable is there and it's still in its channel bit under there where it has to go. And then I should be able to just run it round and then just slightly move that. And that should be good. Let's just check it. Yeah, that's fine. So now it's uh, two fuel lines. I'll do the one at the back first because the other one will be in the way if I do that first. So let's get that back on. They look to be good. And then that one is a longer one that goes to there. There we go. So now we have this part, it's got a gasket on it. So that goes like that. And then we have this, which also has a gasket on it. And that goes like that. And now I've just got the two nuts to put on. I'll put them on off camera. It's only a matter of a nut on there and a nut on there. I'm gonna put the air filter in, and there's an the air filter cover, which I believe hooks in like that. Yep, that's all good. So now I'm gonna put the top cover on. I did have to take the cover off again there, the air filter cover, because I don't think this is gonna go over with it on. Just put that back on afterwards. So let's just rest this into place. Seems to be going where I want it to. Got to get it to line up there. I think the HT lead's got a bit caught. Yep, that was it. Um, so that can go back on now, but I'll just 
the recoil on first. There's the three bolts there. Take them out and then that will go on like that. One there, one there, third one. Just tighten them up. So I sped through all of that. I'll just run through what I did. Um, spark plug, put that in. The plug cap, put that on. There's a bolt at the front that goes through the guard there, just down there. And I had to just push the front of the casing down a little bit to get that in. Uh, but that's in, I put that back on. So we're ready to go now. Um, I'll just get some fuel in it and then we'll go start up. So let's go for start up on this hedge trimmer now. So I went on choke on lock the throttle and there is a primer bulb which is right at the front i nearly forgot where it was give it a good pump Let's see if it runs As you just saw, this still HS80 hedge trimmer started well, ran well, and revved out well. They do take a little bit of warming up, these older steels, but when it warmed up, it was revving out fine. So I'm gonna consider this one done. So all it was on this one was the carburetor needed a clean, and I put the new diaphragm in it. So yeah, it was quite a simple fix, this one. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the video of sorting this still HS80 hedge trimmer out, and I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.